friends we will make a beginning with most interesting and important aspect of capital gains topic the charging section yes already we studied charging section of section 45 but then we have got several subsections in section 45 the first question is sir when already there is a charging section why they developed what is it the subsections that means something which is not taken care by the main section they want to cover it so they brought the concept of subsections like your 45 says what there must be a capital asset and it must have undergone the transfer right once we say like that what the people are doing either they say this is not a capital asset or otherwise they say this is not a transfer accordingly they are trying to escape the taxation so all those things they want to put an end again and again let me tell you friends many a time these subsections provide shows all these things are being brought into the law only to plug in the loopholes in the main section or other way around to revert back the already decided supreme court judgment right see they want to tax when a capital asset got destroyed and insurance claim is received they want to tax that one ssc fought the case vanya silk mills fought the case till the supreme court level stating that when the asset is getting destroyed it will not amount to transfer because when we say extinguishment as a transfer it is the extinguishment of the right in the asset not the assets so his are there the ssc's argument is when the asset gets destroyed i am not making transfer of this asset to the insurance company so what the insurance money which i am receiving is a capital receipt and since there is no enabling provision to tax it i am not going to pay the tax because our canon of law is what revenue receipts unless there is an exemption are taxable capital receipts unless there is an enabling provision to tax it are not taxable they are exempted so to put an end to such argument they have inserted section 45 of 1a stating that whenever any asset gets destroyed by fire or some other eventualities which we read carefully when insurance claim is received that shall be deemed to be the consideration and from that you have to reduce the cost of acquisition or the indexed cost of acquisition depending upon whether it is a long term capital asset or a short term capital asset. Why then 45 to capital asset being converted into stock and trade? There the argument of the SSC is what? Sir, I am not trans making a sale of that particular capital asset, I am only converting the same to the stock and trade. But then the law says what? We are also not asking you to pay the tax till such time you make sale of such a stock and trade. But only we say it amounts to transfer because 247 we have already clearly stated that conversion of capital asset into stock and trade is a transfer. So now although transfer in reality is what only when you transfer the same to other person nobody can make profit out of themselves. So, on that pretext the SC is fighting the case that when capital asset gets converted into stock and trade no that is not the year of transfer when ultimately when I make sale of that particular stock and trade that is the year of transfer. Sir, when uh, charging is postponed till the year of sale what is the problem why you are saying that a transfer takes place in the year in which capital asset gets converted into stock and trade there is a point. 
if we do not say like that the benefit of indexation we have to give till the year in which the stock in trade is sold, but the law want to restrict the benefit of indexation only up to the year of conversion of capital asset into stock in trades. Although year of chargeability is postponed to the year of making sale of such stock in trade, benefit of indexation will be restricted only up to the year of conversion of capital asset into the stock in trade is a point. In three instances, there is a postponement of charging. One is when the asset gets destroyed and insurance claim is going to be received. Year of transfer is the year of destruction. When we say like that, the benefit of indexation must be restricted up to the year of destruction. But poor SSE already is crying because his asset got destroyed. On the other hand, if you say you pay the tax, that fellow will die. So, that is the reason why law is kind enough to say charging chargeability arises in the year of receipt of the first time that a receipt of that particular insurance claim is a point. Similarly, when the asset is a compulsorily acquired 45-5, there also year of transfer is the year in which compulsorily it is acquired, but the charging is being postponed to the year of receipt of the first compensation. So, these are all the exceptions from what is being stated in the section 45 which happens to be the charging section. right? So, just to make note of this point. Section 45 is the main heading. In the normal course, write down in the normal course, year of chargeability is year of chargeability is the year in which capital asset is transferred, capital asset is a transferred. However, there are three exceptions covered by 45 1 a that is asset getting destroyed that is asset getting destroyed and insurance claim is received asset getting destroyed and insurance claim is received next 45 2 capital asset converted into stock and trade, capital asset converted into stock and trade. Then 45-5, what is it? Asset being transferred, asset being transferred by compulsory acquisition. In all the above three situations, year of chargeability is the year in which insurance claim is received oblique stock in trade is sold third 
third first compensation is received third first compensation is received next in all the above three cases next in all the above three cases benefit of indexation benefit of indexation is restricted to is restricted to the year in which asset got destroyed oblique asset got converted oblique asset got compulsorily acquired asset got compulsorily acquired now slightly deviating from the issue let us look into the point called as reference to the valuation officer what is this concept of reference to the valuation officer that is being dealt by section 55a friends fair market value that is whenever what the ssc is saying as the sale consideration as a uh, amount of consideration which he received for transfer of the asset is below the fair market value earlier a sing officer used to have a right to adopt the fair market value as a deemed sale consideration but that is being dispensed off with effect from the assessment year 1988 89 dispensed of means it is not permanently dispensed of there are still some more areas where fair market value has got really a relevance where the fair market value has got a relevance 451a what is 451a when an asset gets destroyed and insurance company is going to give another asset as a matter of claim settlement then how to calculate the capital gains what is the fair market value of such what is it uh, asset which is received from the insurance company similarly 452 when capital asset is getting converted into stock in trade how do you calculate the capital gains fair market value of the asset on the date of conversion into stock in trade minus cost of acquisition or indexed cost of acquisition there also you have got the relevance of the fair market value similarly 454 what is 454 454 deals with the dissolution of a partnership firm and distribution of capital assets to the partners then taxation in whose hands not in the hands of the partners in the hands of the firm there how do you calculate the capital gains what is the fair market value of the capital assets which are given to the partners similarly you have got section 55 section 55 deals with what cost of acquisition in respect of the assets which are acquired prior to 1481 cost of acquisition is the actual cost or the fair market value as on 1481 like that many places you have got the fair market value concept now the ssc when normally he is filing his income tax return will take the assistance of a registered valuer and ask him to put a value for his property and with that particular value he claims that this is the fair market value and calculate the income and tax obligation there on and file the income tax return now the problem comes registered valuer hai to kaisa hai 
पैसे दे के इन्फ्लुएंस कर सकते हैं है या नहीं राइट right? तो इनकेस इफ इनकम टैक्स एसिंग ऑफिसर फील्स दैट द रियल वैल्यू फॉर इट एंड व्हाट द वैल्यू वी हैव ब्रॉट इट एज अ फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू विद द असिस्टेंस ऑफ ए रजिस्टर्ड वैल्यू आर इफ देर इज अ डिफरेंस ऑफ फिफ्टीन परसेंट और इफ द डिफरेंस इज मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड देन इन ऑल सच सिचुएशन ही कैन रेफर to the another officer in the department another person in the department valuation officer and can ask him to look at is the value disclosed by the ssc as a fair market value is really correct or not because the question that is going to be appear in the exam in this area is under what circumstances a sing officer can refer to the valuation officer what are the conditions there it is stated one is that the fair market value of the asset exceeds the value of the asset claimed by the ssc based on uh, what is it uh, the registered valuers value and that is uh, 15% more than what the value that they are saying let us suppose 1 lakh is the value which ssc is saying and the assessing officer feels it is 1 lakh 15000 or where the sc is saying 75000 is the value and the assessing officer says 1 lakh difference is 25000 of course in the last session also student gave a check to me stating that whenever you are delivering the lecture sir please be very clear otherwise as a student sir, we are very confused is it 25000 are more than 25000 when i say more than 25000 is ka 25000 are more than 25000 ka matlab ye hai 25000 one rupee se it becomes more than 25000 okay right but in any case here let us be very careful in saying the sentence construction here is it is a more than 25000 so what is it if the difference percentage wise is what 15% or more amount wise is 25000 or uh, more than 25000 whichever is uh, less whichever is uh, less what you are supposed to do first you see whether the difference between what the ssc's value and what the assessing officer's contention is the value is exceeding by 25000 and second thing that you have to check is what is it the difference being 15% more than what the sc is saying whichever is lower if that is catching then very much the assessing officer can refer the matter to the valuation officer and then friends even if this is not the case another attached thing what is stated if the nature of the asset is such that it is very complex to understand its value without referring the same to the valuation officer then also a sing officer can refer the matter to the valuation officer of course under what circumstances if you feel that it is complex that is not written in the law that is the reason why we are not supposed to play with the assessing officer or argue with the assessing officer on such matters better we be benevolent with the assessing officer otherwise they have got powerful powers you can't say that 20 it is not more than 25000 it is not exceeding 15% how can you refer my case to the valuation officer like that you then he will say the second thing is there friend you please read that uh, having a regard to the nature and the circumstances relevant circumstances it is necessary to do so also i can send the matter to the valuation officer is a point of course once the valuation officer gives a value definitely it is binding on whom binding on the assessing officer but ssc can well contest on 
the value given by the valuation officer that is a latter issue. Now, 451A, let me quickly sum up the points. 451A deals with capital asset being destroyed. Of course, that destruction, how it should happen? As a result of the flood, typhoon, hurricane, cyclone, earthquake, other convulsion of nature, riot or civil disturbance, accidental fire, explosion, action of enemy, action taken by combating an enemy. In these circumstances, that asset should get destroyed. समझ में आया कृष्णा रेड्डी अपने आप जाके उसको बर्न नहीं करना ओके तो पॉइंट हियर इज ऑफ कोर्स योर एग्जामिनर इज नॉट गोइंग टू आस्क यू टू राइट दैट एज अ जनरल अंडरस्टैंडिंग कीप इट इन योर माइंड सो फर्स्ट वेन एवर वी स्टडी द चार्जिंग सेक्शन फर्स्ट वी शुड नो वॉट शुड बी द कैपिटल एसेट्स Second thing that you should know what should be the consideration. Consideration here is the fair market value of the asset which is received from the insurance company plus cash if any received. That is to be taken as a deemed sale consideration. It is actually not a sale. That's the reason why I am using the word deemed sale consideration. Minus cost of acquisition in case if it is a short term capital asset. or otherwise if it is a long term capital asset indexed cost of acquisition here only the point is indexation benefit is to be restricted only up to the year of destruction and what is the year of chargeability year of chargeability is the year in which the such insurance claim is received is a point so i am now moving to section 452 right of course on the basis of the request of our beloved students we plan to provide you a material but students please do remember that material which i am giving and this lectures don't have any connecting link right that is for your standard reference and this is something more specific to the exam what you are writing in the classroom environment i am not asking you to write something which already you have written many times because in pcc preparation you might have written that many times so that quickly we are looking at the provision as a matter of revision now i am moving to the 452 452 says capital asset being converted into stock in trade first it is treated as a transfer because transfer definition given in 2 class 47 says transfer includes what is it conversion of capital asset into stock in trade here two incomes will arise what are those two incomes one is a capital gains income another is a business income on sale of stock in trade you get a business income how to calculate the business income sale consideration minus fair market value as on the date of conversion that is to be taken as a business income what is to be taken as capital gains fair market value as on the date of a uh, the conversion minus cost of acquisition or the indexed cost of acquisition so whenever capital asset gets converted into stock in trade then two incomes will arise is a point then friends here the benefit of indexation is restricted up to the year of conversion and uh, year of chargeability is the year in which the stock in trade is uh, sold is a point now what is the noteworthy point here noteworthy point is capital asset being converted into stock in trade capital gains do arise reverse what is the situation sir stock in trade is converted into capital asset there is no enabling provision there is no enabling provision in the law is a point anyhow i'll make you to write on that since i 
feel one problem if you do the clarity part will come few notes you can take small notes 45 to capital asset getting converted into capital asset getting converted into stock in trade stock in trade Point number one, benefit of indexation, is given up to the year of conversion, is given up to the year of conversion and point number two, year of chargeability is the year in which is the year in which such stock in trade is sold now we get two incomes first capital gains is equal to capital gains is equal to fair market value of the asset fair market value of the asset as on the date of conversion as on the date of conversion minus cost of acquisition oblique indexed cost of acquisition next profit from business profits and gains from business and profession that is equal to pgbp is equal to sale consideration minus fair market value as on the date of conversion as on the date of conversion right friends in the ca final exam they are not going to simply ask you write about the provisions of capital asset getting converted into stock in trade such a question you can expect at pcc level they will mix some other point and will pull the knowledge from you right take an example the ssc company the ssc company purchased a land on purchased a land on 11 1-1-19-72 for rupees 1 lakh fair market value on 1-4-19-81 rupees 3 lakh 50 thousand rupees 3 lakh 50 thousand the land was acquired for construction of office building the company on 1-1-1998 decide to go into real estate decide to go into real estate business and converted the land into 
इनटू स्टॉक एंड ट्रेड ऑन द डेट एफएमवी फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू वाज रुपीस इलेवन लैक्स कंपनी ट्रांसफर्ड The difference between the book value and the fair market value to the general reserve. And the stock in trade was sold. and the stock in trade was sold on 11 2012 discuss tax implications discuss tax implications right i think as a final students when doing the audits kindly take this kind of the practices that the companies resort uno kya kare chup chap without telling to you also uno kya kare 11 lakhs is the fair market value sir now capital city is converted into stock and trade happy well they passed a entry Presuming and assuming that Krishna Reddy keep quiet and close his eyes and put a tick while carrying out the tax audit on behalf of Y Chakravarty Associates. Right? See that is where what I always tell to my beloved articles that there must be a difference between an article and a paid assistant. we can excuse an article ignoring this fact we can excuse a paid assistant ignoring this fact not the article right for a paid assistant he is not well versed or conversant with all this provisions and income tax and all for him it appears to be correct are super entry dale sab capital asset ko close karna credit kar diye स्टॉक इन ट्रेड को डेबिट कर दिए विद फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू इज व्हाट इज अ फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू 11 लैक्स सो स्टॉक इन ट्रेड अकाउंट डेट आर 11 लैक्स टू कैपिटल एसेट 1 लैक टू जनरल रिजर्व 10 लैक्स विदाउट इवन शोइंग इन द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट सो दैट अननेसरली ब्रिंगिंग इट टू द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट एंड लेटर ऑन कृष्णा रेड्डी साहब इज आस्किंग इन द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट व्हाई दिस केम व्हाट इज द टैक्स इंप्लीकेशन ये सब नहीं है बस उसको जनरल रिजर्व स्ट्रेट अवे दैट इज द रीजन व्हाई व्हाइल डूइंग द लेजर स्क्रूटनी काइंडली सी एनीथिंग इज कमिंग टू जनरल रिजर्व स्ट्रेट अवे विद नॉट फ्रॉम द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट ओके बैक टू द पॉइंट फ्रॉम द ऑडिट एंगल टू द टैक्सेशन एंगल today how he passed how the company passed the entries we are not bothered let them pass in the way they want but while computing making the computation you should give due consideration to that 452 and should say that there are two incomes one is capital gain and another is the pgvp profits from profits and gains from business and profession Profits and gains from business and profession. It is very easy to say. What is it? What is the value for which it is sold? What is it? Thirteen lakh fifty thousand. What is the fair market value as on the date of conversion? Eleven lakhs. So the difference is what? Two lakh fifty thousand. So two lakh fifty thousand is the PGPP. Write down as a hint. Later develop the answer. PGPP is two lakh fifty thousand. Stock in trade is sold for thirteen lakh fifty thousand. So, point here is sale proceeds minus fair market value as on the date of conversion is thirteen lakh fifty thousand minus eleven lakhs is a two lakh fifty thousand. That two lakh fifty thousand is the 
profits and gains from business and profession. No problem. Now, how to calculate the capital gains? What is the deemed consideration? That is fair market value as on the date of conversion 11 lakhs. Now, here what is the point? This asset is acquired prior to 1481. So, I have to take cost or fair market value whichever is a higher. So, 3,50,000 I will adopt it as my cost of acquisition and 3,50,000 will be divided with the base year index of 100 and multiplied with the year of conversion. Year in which it is converted 1998, that is what when you know one particular problem you should be double careful. Generally in CA exam small simple silly mistakes we do because we will get elated over enthused by looking at a concept which we studied. So, you be careful 1998 ka index kya hai it is 331. So, 3,50,000 divided by 100 into 331 makes it to 11,58,500. So, resultant capital long term capital loss is there as a hint you write after you develop the answer what should happen 58,500 of the long term capital loss should come. Right, but when you develop the answer we are not bothered about your arithmetical accuracy. We are bothered about whether the student know the fact of 45.2, whether the student know the fact of section 55 says that in respect of the assets which are acquired prior to 1481, it is the cost of the fair market value whichever is higher. This if you do not write, there is a reduction in the marks even after you give the correct answer. Where the question is given for 5 marks? You correctly developed the answer by saying PGBP is 250 and long term capital loss is 58,500 without saying anything about the provisions, then you get only out of 5 marks 2 marks. You make a wrong answer, but still touch the provision you get 3 more 3 marks. So, that is where you be perfect with the what is it the provisions. C. Another question, you take another question. SSC Bank acquired securities. SSC Bank acquired securities as a stock in trade, as a stock in trade on 112002. for rupees 200 crores for rupees 200 crores on 112005 on 112005 ssc converts a stock in trade ssc converts a stock in trade into capital assets at 225 crores fair market value on that date is two fifty crores on one one two thousand twelve on one one two thousand twelve Bank sold those securities for rupees three hundred crores. For rupees three hundred crores. So, here what as a valuer I am expecting you to tell. First point is when stock in trade is converted into capital asset, there is no tax treatment. It will not be subjected to any tax. Because what we have in 45.2 is capital asset getting converted into stock in trade, not the stock in trade getting converted into the 
what is it the capital assets okay there is no tax consequences sir accepted 1038 can i evoke it since it is a long term capital asset because the period of holding is from the date of conversion of stock in trade into capital asset when it is converted into stock capital asset 11205 from that date to this date it is more than 12 months so happy well it is a long term capital asset now i have to give the index i have to calculate the indexed cost of acquisition indexed cost of acquisition means cost of acquisition is what cost of acquisition is fair market value as on the date of conversion that is 200 crores and on 112005 sc converted it at 225 crores where fair market value is 250 so here the noteworthy point is when capital asset is converted into stock in trade you are asked to take the fair market value as on the date of conversion but when stock in trade is converted into capital asset you are asked to not to take the fair market value you are asked to take the original cost only what is the original cost 200 crores this is another noteworthy point this kind of the problems are going to appear in the exam because for you to adopt fair market value there must be a provision which should say the cost must be taken as fair market value as on the date of conversion when a stock in trade gets converted into capital asset no enabling provision to say that you adopt the fair market value of that particular capital asset of that stock in trade which is converted into capital asset on the date of conversion as the cost of acquisition no where it is stated so we continue to take 200 crores the original cost only that subjected to the indexation divide with the what is it year in which that particular capital asset is coming into existence but that indexation must be given friends please remember from 2004 and 5 year only and multiply with the what is it uh, the index of the year of a, a sale is a point so only take the noteworthy points solution you can develop first no tax treatment no tax treatment on conversion of stock in trade into capital asset yes no tax treatment on conversion of stock in trade into capital assets second point you should write is subsequently when such capital asset is sold subsequently when such capital asset is sold cost of such capital asset is cost at which stocks are acquired third is benefit of indexation must be given benefit of indexation must be given from the year in which such a stock in trade is converted into capital assets of course to make you to permanently remember this point i am trying to give you as another similar situation carefully understand let us suppose my father purchased a particular property in 1998 he died let us suppose in 2010 because of the will i got that particular asset what the loss is cost to the previous owner is the cost to the present owner period of holding of the previous owner is the period of holding of the present owner but the benefit of indexation must be given from which year from the year in which the 
such a capital asset is coming into the hands of the present owner that is the most important point right so when i make sale of that particular asset in 2013 cost of my father will be taken but it will be divided with what index of the year in which such capital asset is coming into the hands of the present owner is the point to be remembered like that only here also the benefit of indexation must be given from the year in which such capital asset is coming into existence in the hands of this particular ssc is the point so rest you can very well take care now i quickly move to the 452a today many of the people are coming to the stock exchanges not directly through dmat accounts what is the concept of dmat friends dematerialization when the shares are in the physical format there is a specific identity number see today i am having 10000 rupees 10000 rupee notes i gave those 10000 rupee notes with a specific numbers on it i made note of the same in my diary and gave it to nagender after 6 months i asked nagender to give my 10000 he brought that's the deepavali season he brought what is it 100 rupee one bundle fresh notes and gave it to me immediately my face got red i asked those 10000 rupees i want those 10 10000 10 rupees i want because one particular baba gave to me what is this sir you are talking like this for my requirement i asked you 10000 rupees you gave 10 notes of 1000 rupees so i thought i will be paying you 10000 but not the same 10 notes no 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 i want those notes hota nahi hota if you have got so much of the sentiment you should have kept it with you only sir why you have given it to me now the same story here also i have got tata consultancy shares when they are in the physical format there is a specific identification number hum ek bank ko gaye waha dmat account open kare then we deposited this in the bank ab kya ho raha dosto jab hum hamare paise bank mein dale to kya hota we become the beneficial owner they become the legal owner in the example which i gave once i gave that 10 10000 or 10 1000 rupee notes to the nagender i am the beneficial owner of that 10000 he is the legal owner other way around how he can give it to somebody else right so jab dmat account mein hamara physical shares deposit kar diye to beneficial owner is b and legal owner is the banker otherwise banker how on our behalf can make sale then can i say when the income tax law, income tax people are asking shares are sold in dmat format please pay the tax if can i say i am only beneficial owner why you are asking you go and ask what is it the legal owner who made the transfer of it in the absence of provision beautiful provision like 45 to a intelligent indians can very well question like that that is the reason why specifically we have brought this concept called as 45 to a and transfer of securities on a deposit by depositories it is not the depository who is subjected to the tax it is a beneficial owner now the other issues here is like let us suppose i purchased in 1979 tata shares 1000 and in a 2000 i purchased tata consultancy shares uh, tata shares one more block 
in 2010 i opened one demat account first i deposited the one which i purchased later in 2000 subsequently i deposited the one which i purchased earlier in 1979 now out of the total shares i am making a sale now how to decide which shares i sold of course sc will take what is more beneficial to them but the law should also give some clarity na first in first out bata diye uno first in first out bole to kya hai not on the basis of what you purchased what you deposited in the depository account if you have deposited first the 1979 and then the 2000 then physical possession of the shares and uh, virtual possession is also one and the same but kya hua yahan pe in this example which i explained first i deposited the one which i purchased later and next i deposited the one which i purchased earlier now i am making a sale means the loss is first in first out what you have deposited first is presumed to have been sold first so for the identification purpose it is first in first out after having identified which shares i sold then i should see these shares are acquired on which date from that date to the date of transfer what is the period of holding based on that it is a long term capital asset or short term capital asset we will decide based on that we will give the benefit of indexation so what is most important it is not when you purchased when you deposited is most important when shares are transferred in the form of a, a depositories is a point then friends i move to the next issue 453 only when it is so relevant from the examination point of view i feel that i should make you to write otherwise the notes which i am giving will have all the details of it logically i think all of you are clear with the depository and doing with the a depository kind of thing one or two problems you can practice and if they are going to come in our overall discussion of that 45 questions of the previous examination once this point comes there there i will make a discussion